We're back with Coach June Jones. You're no stranger to football because you were the Kodak All-American star <coughs> quarterback, right? Yeah. You know, you now then transition to coaching. How was that transition for you? Did you just model your style after the coaches you had that made you so great as well? That's a good question. Um, I I had my own. Uh, I've done a lot of things. I was a, I was a uh, uh, while I was playing in professional football after the, that year that you're talking about. I uh, owned my own business. I, I sold the satellite televisions, uh, uh, dishes to private homes. I put in probably the first dishes in a private home in Atlanta, Georgia, and I invested all the money I had. I was only making $25,000 a year playing quarterback for the Atlanta Falcons at that time. And I saved up enough to buy and put down payment on 10 satellite dishes. And I didn't know the first thing about uh, satellite television. But I had watched this show in 1977 called ESPN. And I had seen it because Ted Turner was big in, in Atlanta. He had just started Channel 17, which, which now is CNN and every, everybody else, WTBS. And I remember watching in his studio this sports, a 24-hour sports show. And I was a sports junkie anyway when I was a kid. So I'm watching this. I'm watching Chris Berman. And, I'm, and, it was, and then they'd go off the air, and I'm watching them in between commercials because the cameras were still running. And I said, this is going to be, this is going to be big. And so... Uh, I believe it or not, I went and found out that homes out in the country couldn't have cable. And so I said, this is going to be so big. I, I, so I went and bought 10 dishes. I didn't know how to put them in. I didn't know anything about them. I didn't anything. I, and I, ever, I, bought them, I think I bought them, the whole package, for like $2,100, and I sold them from anywhere from $12,000 to $20,000. And those 10 units, I made more money than I made playing football. And uh, so sure enough... Um, as somebody else was on doing that too, and then it got real competitive. So I was in it for about a year and a half, two years. And it got real competitive. Uh, all of a sudden, the prices dropped way down because you know the, the, the twenty one hundred little markup there. But uh, but you know you're going to do what they're going to pay, you know. And so by that time, the markup went so down that you'd buy it for twenty one hundred and you'd only sell it for you know twenty eight hundred and. I didn't know, you know, it took me forever to put the things in anyway. So uh, uh, it, I just decided to, that I needed to do something else. So I was in securities. I, I, I was a principal in a securities company. My father had an investment firm, and I sold stocks and bonds and, and different things for, for about six or seven years. But I, I, that sports, I was just a sports junkie, like I said, and I wanted to coach. So I coached in high school for two years in Georgia. And then um, I called Dick Tomey, Jerry Glanville. You asked me about the two coaches. The two coaches that influenced me the most are Jerry Glanville and Mouse Davis, who were on my staff the last two years. And I hired them, and they now were working for me. And, and I think most of the things that I do as a football coach, I kind of stole from them, and uh, uh, they influenced me greatly. What gave you the confidence to make the leap from doing what you were doing in business and then going back into football? Well, I think whenever you, you're, you, you know, and I tell young people this, the, you know, the greatest thing about this country is that you can do anything. I mean, you can be whatever you want to be. But you better be something you have a passion for, okay? And, and like I said, from the time I was, you know, five years old, I wanted to be a professional athlete. I was going to do it in something. I didn't know what it was. I, I shot even par golf when I was 12 years old. I, I was all state in, in football, basketball, and baseball. Uh, and I chose football after realizing that I couldn't run. And I, and I wasn't a power hitter in baseball, so I, 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 I wasn't you know, fast enough to play basketball in the pro, so I decided I got to play football. And, and I was you know, six foot four and a half, I was uh, 180 pounds, and, and I couldn't run, so I couldn't be a wide receiver, I couldn't, so I taught myself how to be a quarterback. And I remember taking a bag of footballs and, and throwing them up against the wall over and over. I painted a circle on a wall. And I remember going up to my grade school, and I, for hour after hour, I'd throw the ball up against that wall and hit that dot that I put up there. And, and I remember my fingers started to bleed, you know, a couple times because I did it so many times. But, but I was going to learn how to play quarterback, and I was like 15 years old at this time. And uh, sure enough, uh, I finally got a chance to play my senior year in high school. And uh, the University of Hawaii and Oregon offered me scholarships in Portland State. I ended up going to Oregon at the time where I backed up Dan Fouts and a guy named Norval Turner who just took the San Diego Chargers job. We were the quarterbacks. And then I transferred to Hawaii 
and uh, at that time they were passing the football and uh, uh, when I got here they became an option team Larry Price became the coach and they wanted a more of a running quarterback and uh, I couldn't run <laughs> so I was here two and a half years never really played and uh, but I, I can't I continue just to work hard you know try to get myself ready all the time to, to in case I did get a chance but uh, um, I transferred back home, and I really was going to quit football, but a guy named Mouse Davis, who we talked about, talked me into coming out one more time. And that year, uh, I set the NCAA record for passing in one season. And, you know, I think back about that, how close I was to quitting and giving up. But I had always had a passion to do that since I was young. And finally I got a chance because all the hard work and not giving up I am sitting here talking to you today because I decided to continue to play football, and it would have been real easy to quit. I mean, I played five years and never got in a game, you know. Thanks for tuning in. Stay tuned for more on Greater Good Radio.